Warning. This is a Xenoblade 2 build which is mainly geared towards beating post-game bosses. Therefore, there will be spoilers, especially considering locations of items that you will need for this build. If you have not completed the game, I suggest you turn back now. So with that said, let's just get ready to start Shut the... Up. So with that said, we'll just get ready to start Shut the... Uh, just start the video already. Hello everyone, this is Blue Eye, and welcome to my guide to a Rex solo build. With this build I was able to beat all super bosses in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and I would like it to share with it today. The build is focused around Pyra and Mithra's abilities as well as using evasion to tank most damage while iframing the, uh, the most dangerous ones. So of course People know Mithra is really strong and that's mainly due to her passives and the main one being light speed flurry. Since whenever I get a critical hit we recharge the art that we use. Which basically means we can spam arts together near indefinitely and just keep the special train rolling due to it. Of course uh, together with Glint which also increases my critical hit rate it's even easier to keep your art spam going and eventually your special spam. Finally we have Foresight which increases accuracy and evasion rate of everyone at max affinity and this is one of the main tools that will keep us alive against super bosses since face tanking a lot of damage is doable to a certain degree but it's not really great especially against the many one hit kill moves the super bosses tend to have. So of course for Mithra we have S plus Trust and a Moon Matter Core Chip which gives us 45% critical rate and a nice 1573 auto attack. Which is one of the highest you can get, I mean the other options are, uh, let's see, Sunlight, Dilaton or Tachyon. But they, those don't have as high crit rate and it's really the crit rate because we want to keep of course the light speed, fl light speed Flurry going. As for auxiliary cores on Mithra, I have Affinity Max Attack 5, which is the highest damage modifier you can get out of an AUX core. Pretty sure that's correct. And the other AUX cores not reflect immunity, because you only need a f reflect immunity against two super bosses. But uh, the default option we have is actually Affinity Max, of, uh, Affinity Max Evade 5. So let me just grab that real quick, which is this. Which together with uh, with Foresight will increase our evasion rate with even more. Making sure we survive most things. If you want to be risky, you could run something like Crit Up or Outdoor Attack Up. Uh, like Outdoor... Oh, that's Wolfric. Hi Wolfric. I mean like out, uh, Outdoor Attack Up, which gives 40%, a 40% boost. Uh, however... We want the extra survivability because otherwise you're relying a bit too much on RNG. And this build is already kind of sometimes relying on RNG a lot. And there it is, outdoor attack up. And um, a lot of people actually go crit up on Mithra because you get a 9% increase in critical hit rate. Well, it goes up by 9. It's 20% of course. However, if you do the math, it's only a 2% increase in damage. And with the pouch items that I have you don't really uh, miss the the crit rate that you lose here. It, you don't really see it return in your arts. You will still basically always be able to spam arts in whatever fashion you want. You just got to pay a little bit more attention to see whether or not you got the art recharge. So that's quite a simple setup for Mithra. Uh, but of course Mithra is not alone. Pyra still exists in the game. And this build actually utilizes Pyra as well. So Pyra, if we look at her affinity chart, first of all, we have Flaming Edge, which increases critical damage by 50%. So it already suggests that we want something that does critical hits because that damage will be amplified a lot. And we have Resplendence, which increases blade combo damage by 72%. So you kind of want 
it kind of already points to crits plus blade combos. Purifying flames is whatever. And the level three special, Blazing Ant, also increases critical damage, but now by a whopping 85%. So the way we utilize Pyra in this build is purely by using her level three special Blazing Ant and have a high critical hit rates to get all this amazing bonus damage going. In fact, you can just break the damage cap with a level three blade combo on Blazing End, which is insane if you think about it. To complement this, we have another Moon Matter chip because that gives the highest critical hit rate in the game while still providing this high auto attack damage. So we actually have the same auto attack as Mithra because we're also S plus trust here. And for Ox cores, we, again, we want to amplify the, the uh, level three, <laughs> go away Wolfric. We want to amplify the level three special. So we run specials level three plus five, which increases the special by 60%. And another affinity max attack five, because that's just, it, it is the highest uh, non-specific amplif amplification of damage you can get out of an Ox core. And with our setup, as you'll see in just a few seconds, we have max affinity anyway. Right, so next we want to kind of be able to tank. So we have two common blades, which is not common for most people to use, but the, these blades have an agility mod of 21 and 22%. The max you can get out of this modifier is 24%, but it's not really needed. As long as you're above 20, you're fine. And they both have a pentagon chip. And because they're a katana, we get a nice 100 extra agility from these two. As for aux scores, we have Hunter's Chemistry 5 and Shoulder to Shoulder 5, which both increase affinity either when we start the battle or when the enemy starts the battle. Because we have two of each, this actually means that we st start every battle at max affinity. Which is really nice since we get all our Ox course bonuses and Foresight active. So that basically covers the, the other two blades. These are for agility tanking. And finally we arrive at Rex. Of course uh, with arts, well not of course, let's go for accessories first. We have the avant-garde medal, which is one of the, if not the most broken accessory in the game. The avant-garde metal absorbs 20%, 22% of critical damage dealt. So every time we get a critical hit, which is very likely with a, this setup, we heal. So anything that is not evaded is healed off with the avant-garde metal. And that is also why we can actually go to such low evasion rates. Because you don't have to evade everything. We're trying to get as much damage out, so we try to evade just the right amount while healing off the rest. The other accessory is the high-tech eye patch, which adds 54% to damage ratio after canceling an auto attack. And this is actually a, quite an interesting modifier as it applies to your damage ratio, which means that all other modifiers also get this amplification. And as a result, this is maybe even the most damage you can get out of an accessory. And since we're gonna be chaining everything with everything with cancels anyway this there's no there's no downside to this basically let's see finally we have the pouch items and i'm running mustard cordef and narcipier narcipier jelly most people would run two desserts because you get art recharge so in the case that we don't get critical hits we still have recharge on the arts and we can just use them really fast but the extra physical damage reduction that we get from the Mustard Core Def is crucial against with surviving certain moves that don't always get evaded. The Ultra Annihilation Flare, you can actually face tank the Flare with this, these pouch items, which is really nice since you can save the chain attack for the Murder Ray. Anyway, that will basically conclude the setup I have here. Uh, if we look at arts that you use, you finally you want to use double spinning edge because you have two hits, so two chances to crit. Rolling smash is your highest damage art. So you always want to run, you know, your highest damage art because of the ether and the high damage ratio. And most people would run anchor shot. However, if you're going solo, which this build is planning to do, 
Anchor Shot is just too low damage to really do anything. The potions don't really matter since you have avant-garde healing anyway. And it's quite slow. So instead we use Sword Batch which sometimes comes in handy and it's actually quite a fast art. So that kind of wraps up this build. Uh, again, I've been able to beat every super boss in the game with this setup only swapping uh, let's see only swapping affinity max of 8 5 for reflect immunity when i needed it against ophion and orion the locations for each item used in this build will be shown at the end of the video but what we'll do right now is just to see how much damage we can actually do i'll show you my fight against the easiest super boss of them all which is uh, reeking douglas so let's go to Gormod and just find, try to find him and murder him. And here we are, we're in the Brigands hideout in Gormod and we're ready to take on Reeking Douglas. We already do quite a bit of damage here with just double spinning edge and we haven't even started using our specials yet. Of course as you see, I'm, you want to chain every attack into each other to get that high tech eye patch bonus damage. Which is basically like a times two damage increase. It's actually insane. And you already saw that first blade level three blade special by Pyra doing a lot of damage, and that's not even you know that's just a start. We're just gonna do even more damage with this level two combo, and now we're already hit for almost two hundred thousand damage with the level two blade combo. And uh, yeah, well, Reeking Douglas is just gonna get destroyed here, basically. And I think this kind of showcases that um, I've s almost managed to optimize this build's damage potential compared to the survivability. And especially with the uh, fights against other Super Bosses, I'll go into detail. It's basically, I first started going full agility, and then fights kind of took long way longer than it sh than they should basically and by optimizing the build into what it is now i've managed to cut most of those kill times in half which is a really good sign of the build doing still doing what i intended it to do which was evasion tank and just murder but now by outputting even higher damage so that will cover this fight and we will go to the item locations of every accessory auxiliary core or core chip that you need for this build but before we go there, I want to thank you already for watching and uh, I'll see you in the video where we go over the other super bosses. The avant-garde medal can be obtained from Haywire Radcliffe in the lower level of the world tree. Fast travel to the sky bridge point and once arrived, head up the elevator in front of you. Turn right and almost immediately turn left around the corner to find this unique monster. The high-tech eye patch can be gotten from Bryonac militaires in the upper level area of Moarde. To find them, fast travel to the mine number two entrance and look around the area. They should be flying around here, and they're around level 65. The unique monster Var Vagrant Balder, which is in the top left of this sub-area, also drops this item. The Moon Matter chip only drops from Super Boss Cloud Sea King Ken. Fast travel to the central ether boulder in lower level Tantal and he should be around here. However, if you have not beaten him before, he will only appear in cloudy weather. So be sure to check the top right and otherwise fast travel between titans to reset this. If you have already beaten him you can find his tombstone to the west of the fast travel point. Pentagon chips can be found all over Aurist. The place where I farmed them was in the stomach area in Uriah. Fast travel to the Crown Sanctuary and farm the Illumni Skeeter that you find here. The Affinity Max Attack 5 Aux Core is found in the Olithra Ruins in Uriah. Fast travel to the Olithra Playhouse and fight the level 96 Sloth Drivers. Note that these drivers will only appear if you have completed the quest Farewell Good Friend. This quest requires you to already have beaten the quest Insurgent Investigations and you probably need to be at least chapter 10 and maybe even post game. The level 99 unique monster, which is also a driver, that is in these ruins 
can also drop this aux core. Affinity Max Evade 5 drops from Armored Brennan in the lower level area of Moorardine. Fast travel to the 4th ranged entrance and drop down to the open space below. Brennan lies further northwest. He might be annoying since he has a high block rate, but otherwise he's not a big threat. Specials level 3 plus 5 drops from everybody's favorite unique monster, Territorial Rothbard. To find him, head to the way tree located in the upper level right area in Gormod. He should be roaming around the place and he might have even killed you a few times in the early game. If you have already taken your revenge, his tombstone is found northeast from the fast travel point. Head past the lower level monkeys and around the tree and you will find it on a cliffside. Reflect immunity is found in the upper level right area in Gormod. Fast travel to Zeno's dead bull and swim north to find a tunnel. Kill the King Piranyaxes in here to find this aux core. Another auxiliary core that you will need, which is shoulder to shoulder 5, is dropped from a unique monster which is near this point. Insectivore Malcolm can be found on the second batch of land you encounter after swimming here. Finally, the last auxiliary core you will need for this build is Hunter's Chemistry 5, which drops from Dimosaurus in Temperantia. Fast travel to any point in the central plane with uh, in favor to the Leaning Tower of Doric, and you should find these dinosaurs roaming around the area. <laughs>